Gentlemen, Leggett and Myers, makers of Fatima cigarettes, is proud to bring you its prize-winning radio program, winner of the Motion Picture Herald Fame Award. The story you are about to hear is true. Only the names have been changed to protect the innocent. Fatima cigarettes, best of all long cigarettes, brings you Dragnet. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned a homicide detail. Twelve men drop completely from sight over a short period of time. There's evidence of foul play. Four months pass. You finally locate the leading suspect in the case. Your job? Pick him up. You'll be amazed when you compare Fatima with other long cigarettes. You'll find they now cost the same. But in Fatima, the difference is quality. You see, Fatima is the quality king-size cigarette because it contains the finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos superbly blended. And Fatima is extra mild with a much different, much better flavor and aroma than any other long cigarette. So compare Fatima yourself. Fatimas now cost the same as other long cigarettes, but your first puff will tell you... Ah, that's different. Yes, in Fatima, the difference is quality. Ask your dealer for Fatima, the quality king-size cigarette. Best of all long cigarettes. Start enjoying Fatima tomorrow. documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case transcribed from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Wednesday, October the 6th. It was sultry in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of homicide. My partner's Ben Romero. The boss is Thad Brown, chief of detectives. My name's Friday. We were on the way out from the office, and it was 10.45 a.m. when we got to Ortega Street, number 1285. Second floor? Yeah, room 14. They all smell the same, don't they? What's that? Room and housing. Oh, yeah. No, these are the odd numbers here. Must be down that way, huh? Yeah, here it is. Fourteen. You guys really cops? All right, come on, get up. <laughs> no fooling. No fooling. You really cops? I thought you were faking. We showed you our identification at the door. I thought you were faking. That's the truth. There's a couple of guys out to muss me up. I, I thought you were them. Your name Henry Ross? Yeah, that's right. I thought you were one of those moochers I had a fight with in the bar the other night. So he's going to get a pal and come back in and take care of me. Yeah? Yeah. I got no reason to fight with cops. Well, I didn't do my room any good. My lady's sure gonna scream. All right, come on. You want to finish up dressing? I want to talk to you downtown. What's it about, officer? Missing person. We'll brief you when we get downtown. Well, that's all right with me. Could you take these handcuffs off, please? It's kind of hard dressing with them. All you have to do is put your shoes on. You can make out. All right. 
I don't know why you had to slap handcuffs on me. I didn't know you were cops. You mind if we check through your things, Rolf? Huh? Why? You mind? Oh, go ahead if you want. I got a knife. You know, if you'd have spoke up at the door, there wouldn't have been a fight. I thought you were that mooch in a bar and his friend. I thought you were looking for trouble. You about ready to go? Yeah, I'd like to brush my teeth off, you don't mind. I got a real mouthful of cotton this morning. All right, what do you keep your toothbrush? It's over here. I'll get it. No, I'll get it. Never mind. Here. Yeah, first shelf. It's in the glass. Right Don't there. you trust me? There you go. Want some toothpaste? Yeah. All right. right. There you are. Turn on the water tap, huh? Hey. Nothing, Joe. It's pretty clean. Of course I'm clean. What do you expect? Anybody could have made the mistake. I didn't know you were cops. Henry Ellsworth Ross. Is that your full name? Yeah, that's right. I hardly ever use the Ellsworth, though. That's a real lousy name, huh? Well, what's the fetch on all this, officer? We told you, missing person. I want to talk to you about it. I don't think I can help you. Nobody I know is missing. How about Paul Davis? Davis? Yeah, I know Davis. I don't know if his name is Paul, though. Been gone a long time, huh, Miss Davis? Yeah, that's right. Something wrong, you think? We figure murder. After going over his room thoroughly, we took Henry Ellsworth Ross back to the city hall to the interrogation room. He was a slightly built man, dark hair, brown eyes, swarthy complexion. He was a longshoreman by trade. Among his friends and acquaintances, he was known as a heavy drinker and a man with a violent temper. Ben and I questioned him for a half an hour and got nowhere. He sat across the table, relaxed, scraping at a thick callus on his hand with his fingernail. I'll tell you the truth. I just don't know what you're getting at. I think I know a guy named Davis, and that's about as far as it goes. Sure that's all you've got to tell him? Of course I'm sure. Now, look, i got a right to call a lawyer if you're going to sit there and throw a lot of charges at me. We're not throwing charges at you, Henry. We've got a missing persons case. We'd like to have you cooperate. That's about it. Well, maybe I'd like to, but I can't. Paul Davis is just a name to me. Maybe I know him. I, I don't know. You got that report there, then? Mm, yeah, just a minute. There you go. Thanks. Well, here's the way it goes, Henry. Yeah? Well, according to his wife, Paul Davis left Los Angeles by auto a little over four months ago. He was driving up to Oakdale, California, to take a job with a dairy company up there. He never got there. He's been missing ever since. So? What's the pitch? All we've been able to find is Davis's car, the 36 Ford Coupe, 7 Tom 792. It was sold a month ago up in Lodi, California. But Davis didn't sell it. A man by the name of Carter signed the pink slip at the time of the sale. Henry Carter. Sorry. Don't mean anything to me. Well, as Carter made it look like Paul Davis had signed the Ford over to him. We checked it out. Davis's signature was Ford's. That's so? It's supposed to have something to do with me? Did you ever use the name Henry Carter? Of course not. Ross. That's the only name I go by. Never had your name changed? No. Never used an alias? I told you, no. I wonder if you'd mind taking a look at this. Here you go, this here. Well, what's this got to do with me? The pink slip to Paul Davis' car. Mm-hmm. Maybe signatures on the back here, transfer of ownership. You recognize either one of them? Paul Davis. Henry H. Carter. Oh. No? Doesn't mean anything to me, is it supposed to? It should, yeah. Why? The signatures are both in your handwriting. How about it, Henry? How about what? I don't even know what you're talking about. You're trying to give me the treatment? What's this all about? I'm trying to locate Paul Davis. I'm not even sure I know the guy. I think you better level, Henry. Our handwriting man checked both the signatures. It's your writing. Well, then maybe you better get a new handwriting man. I never saw that slip. I never wrote those signatures. Anybody can copy handwriting. Well, I've got something else for you, Ross. I'd like to have you check it over, see if you can identify it. What is it? It's a letter. I want to take a look here. Mm-hmm. that mean anything to you? No, nothing. I hope you're not going to tell me this is my handwriting. That's what the report says. Oh, it's crazy. I never wrote like that in my life. All the writing characteristics match up. Same as the signatures on the pink slip. All right, maybe they are the same. I didn't write either one. I never wrote like that in my life. Here, let me show you how no, I write. No, that's all right, Henry. Ben, you want to pull the package tomorrow night? Mm, yeah, okay. I don't savvy one bit of this, Sergeant. How about laying it out? Man? 
You can see the name at the bottom of the letter. It's signed Henry Carter, same as the pink slip. Well, that doesn't mean anything to me. Well, this letter was sent to the wife of Paul Davis about nine weeks ago. It says here that Davis supposedly was too busy to write his wife, so he had this Henry Carter send a letter. He also writes in here that Davis sold his car to Carter. Somebody trying to cover up, huh? Yeah, we think so. We think it's Henry Carter. This, um, this Davis guy, he's been gone about four months? That's right. You said you thought Davis was murdered. How come? Just an idea. Oh. Eight men have disappeared from around here in the last 14 months, just like Davis. Mm. Six more up in the San Joaquin Valley the same way. They took off alone on auto trips. They're never seen again. Not a trace. Pretty funny. There you go, Joe. Thank you. You've got your record here, Henry, from Baton Rouge. Sent to Sheriff Clemens for it. Huh? Look, do we have to drag all out again? It's past. Just one thing we had to check, Henry. You told us that you never use an alias, is that right? All right, I have. I didn't know what you're getting at. I didn't think there's any use dragging out dirty laundry again. Now, I asked you if you ever used the name Henry Carter. Okay, I've used it. It's a common name. There's a lot of Henry Carters around. We only know one of it's your description. I'm clean. You know that. On the smoke, Henry? No. You? Yeah, thanks. Well, let me have one, will you? Sure. There you go. Thanks. You got a match here. You know, we rode this thing for four months. It's all over the state. Here. Huh? I'll tell you what we got, Henry. We'll let you make up your own mind. It's not my writing. On June 4th, Paul Davis left Los Angeles in his car headed for Oakdale. Late in the afternoon, he stopped for gas at a service station just beyond San Fernando. The attendant says a man was with Davis. You fit that man's description, Henry. Yeah? Well, I've seen monks like that in court. They get on the stand and can't even remember their own name. A couple others. You and Davis stopped for a hamburger just outside of Gorman. There's a man there. He remembers you, too. You stopped again in Bakersfield. Picked up a quart of oil for the car. You and Davis had a Coke. It's the last time he was seen alive. That makes me a killer, huh? A month after that, the pink slip to Davis's car came through DMV up in Sacramento. That was for the transfer of ownership from Davis to Henry Carter. Both in your handwriting. A couple of weeks later, Mrs. Davis got that letter. A month ago, Davis's car was sold to a dealer in Lodi. Yeah, yeah. We found the dealer, Ross. Showed him your mug shot. He says you sold him the car. That all? It's just the main part. There's more. We've been on the road a lot. We followed you from here to Sacramento and back, Henry. Every stop, every detour took us a long time. Yeah, I guess it did. What do you say, Ross? Nothing. Any way you want it, Henry. You got another smoke? Yeah? Yeah, here you are. Thanks. Here. Yeah. I guess you worked hard on it, huh? All over the state. That's right. Must be pretty hot up in the valley somewhere, too. Dusty, huh? We made out. I've never been up in the valley in summer. It's too hot for me. We got people who saw you there. What's it prove? Ten people and some writing samples. You can't build a case on that. You know it, don't you? We're going to try you think I murdered Davis? You, Sergeant? Yeah. You think I murdered those other guys, too, huh? What was it, the uh, 10, 12 of them? We're asking about Davis. You think I killed him? Tell me the truth, do you? You think I murdered Davis? Yeah, I think you did. Uh-huh. Well, then you know as well as I do, there's only one way to prove it. Yeah. Find his body. 1.15 p.m. Ben and I took Henry Ross out and fed him some lunch. Then we took him back to the city hall to the interrogation room where we continued to question him. He was relaxed and he talked a great deal about everything but the disappearance of Paul Davis. He didn't seem anxious to get away, made no demands for an attorney to represent him. For a full hour, he did most of the talking. He told us about the different homicide cases he'd read up on. He asked us about the 12 men who disappeared in the past months in the same manner Paul Davis had. Was there any trace of them at all? Did we have any leads? How did we think we were going to find them? Well, we finally got around to asking him if he'd submit to a lie detector test. He seemed taken by the idea and agreed to it almost immediately. Ben called Sergeant Berger and made arrangements for the test. We made up a list of key questions. At 5 p.m., we took the suspect to the third floor of the old city jail where Sergeant Berger gave him the polygraph test. 
On the way back to the office, Ross complained he was hungry. We stopped and bought him coffee and donuts. We got back to the interrogation room a little after 6 p.m. The questioning continued. Ross didn't seem to mind at all. He kept talking. We let him talk. 8 p.m. He was still going. You remember the Wilson case back in 34, don't you, say? Woman killed her whole family. Big case, you remember. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's pretty tragic. Uh, is that a hobby of yours, Henry, collecting murder stories? No, no, I, I just read them, remember. I guess I can remember every big murder case in the last 15 years. That's so? Yeah, it's about all of them. I, yeah, I guess it is kind of a hobby. I, I get a big kick out of it. I get it, Ben. Excuse me, Henry. Oh, sure. Interrogation room, Friday. Oh, yeah, Burger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, how many? Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. You know, there's one thing I get a real big kick out of those detective magazines. Mystery stories. The way they make out the murderer. How do you mean? Well, you know, they always build it up into something big. Somebody's always killing somebody else for a million dollars. Or maybe over some woman. Some beautiful woman. Same way with the movies. That's where they get it all mixed up. Yeah, I don't think I follow you, huh? Oh, sure you do. Every time some guy writes a murder story, he's got to build up a big reason for a killing. Mm-hmm. A lot of money, beautiful woman. Revenge, maybe. Always got to be a big reason. Motive. Motive, that's what they say. Yeah, well, it generally works out that way, doesn't it? Why? I bet you there's a, a thousand murder cases in your files without any reason at all. Some people kill, that's all. I've heard about lots of them. They, they just want to kill, and they go ahead and do it. Maybe for a few bucks, maybe for nothing. They, they just do it, that's all. That's all. Sure, you know that. Like this thing you've been talking about. Ten, twelve guys disappear. They got a few bucks, maybe they got nothing. Somebody plows them under, and that's all. No big reason. They just do it. So twelve guys are gone. It doesn't mean anything. Mm-hmm. That's how you got it figured out, you know? Huh? The phone call a minute ago there. It was a man who gave you the lie detector test. Oh, that right? How'd it go? He just finished going over your graph. He got 16 positive reactions. Yeah, what's that mean? You lied, Henry, 16 times. That's right. You better tell him to get a new machine. I lied all the way through. Mind telling us why? No, I don't mind. I guess I knew you'd find out. Let's go get something to eat first, though. I'm hungry. No, we better talk a little more, Henry. Well, let's go. I'll tell you why we're eating. Bring a pencil. We gotta draw your map. Map of what? The canyon, where I buried it. You are listening to Dragnet for the step-by-step solution to tonight's authentic case history. Here, step-by-step, are the actual reasons why Fatima is the quality king-size cigarette. Why in Fatima, the difference is quality. Quality of tobaccos, the finest domestic and Turkish varieties, extra mild and superbly blended to give you a much different, much better flavor and aroma. Quality of manufacture. Smooth, round, perfect cigarettes. Rolled in the finest paper money can buy. Manufactured in the newest and most modern of all cigarette factories. Quality even to the appearance of the bright, clean, golden yellow package. Carefully wrapped and sealed to bring you Fatima's rich, fresh, extra mild flavor. Compare Fatima yourself. Fatima's now cost the same as other long cigarettes, but your first puff will tell you... Ah, that's different. Yes, in Fatima, the difference is quality. Insist on Fatima. Start enjoying the quality king-size cigarette. Fatima, best of all long cigarettes. Wednesday, 9.55 p.m. Ben and I took Henry Ross across the street, bought him a Coke at Max Place, and we took him next door to the Melbourne cafeteria. It was almost closing time. Ross got himself a cottage cheese and pineapple salad, bacon and liver with onions, rye bread, banana pie, and coffee. Ben had a hot beef sandwich, mashed potatoes, and coffee. I had the same. At the back of the cafeteria, one of the busboys was mopping the tile floor. It was a strong smell of disinfectant. How about that table over there, Sergeant? That all right with you? Yeah, it's okay. Doesn't make any difference. It's fine. Yeah. Well, 
want some water? Yeah. Here we are, please. All right, I'll get some. Oh, boy, living onions. That sure smells great, huh? Yeah. I can't take those onions so well. They repeat on me. Ah, not me. I can eat anything. Salt and pepper? Yeah, thanks. Boy, I'm sure hungry. I haven't eaten much today. Did you get a sandwich made with rye bread? Mm-mm. Graham bread. Oh, you should have gotten the rye. Real German rye bread. Here. Smell that. Real nice and fresh. Here you go. Ben? Hello, oh, thanks. Oh, thank you. You know, all that talk really sharpened up my appetite. Boy, this food tastes good. Mm-hmm. Shall we go? Uh, no, yeah, thanks. We brought a pencil along, Henry. You want to start taking them? As good a time as any, I guess. You know, the whole thing just comes right back to what I was trying to tell you there in the office. Yeah, what's that? Well, you know. All about those phony mystery stories. Oh, yeah. Every time there's trouble, there's a big reason behind it. It's phony, that's all. Yeah? Sure, this... It's Paul Davis, for instance. I guess I knew you'd find me out. I knew this morning when you picked me up, you had it figured. Must have been a big job, huh? Finding me? Mm-hmm. Pretty big, I mean, you know. A lot of mileage. How'd it happen? Well, there again. I just like I was saying. There's no big reason behind it. I needed a few bucks and this Davis came along. <coughs> I guess he was it. Hey, pass me a catch it, will you? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, here you are. Get the lid off there. There you go. Thanks. Where'd you meet, Davis, Henry? Oh, I was hitchhiking out on Ventura. I'm not a dime in my jeans. I was going up to Maricopa. I thought I had a job up there, and this Davis come along. Picked me up. Mm-hmm. You ever know him before that? No. No, a stranger. He says he's going to Oakdale. The guy give me a ride. Go ahead. Well, we was stopped for gas at San Fernando, and I saw he had a few bucks in his wallet, and I guess that's when I got the idea. Mm-hmm. About what? Killing him. Mm-hmm. Now, maybe that gives you an idea what I was talking about. You don't need any big reason to kill somebody. Davis said, 18 bucks. Now, suppose I told that to a writer. Somebody killing the guy for 18 bucks. That wouldn't make much sense, huh? Uh-huh. He'd tell you he'd never sell. You need a million dollars, beautiful woman, good motive. Yeah. Where'd you kill him, Henry? Just outside of Bakersfield. A little canyon there. I got Davis to buy a fifth of sherry in Bakersfield. He drank some on the way. Hey, pass the salt, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Well, there's no good without plenty of salt. How'd you kill Davis, Henry? Well, that's a funny thing. He drank some of the wine and got a little sleepy. I was just outside of Bakersfield. Dark by that time. I spotted this little canyon. I figured it was as good a place as any. Well, so I guess him. Pull off to the side, had a few more drinks, and spotted this little shack out there in the middle of nowhere. Exactly where it was, you said. Right in circuits, maybe two miles north of Bakersfield. We got to the shack, finished the wine, went to sleep. Both of them? Mm-hmm. And that's where the funny part comes in. I guess I killed Davis, all right. But I didn't mean it. Oh, brother, get a whiff of that, huh? Why do these monks have to mop up while people are eating? They'll be through in a minute, Henry. That's fine. How'd you mean, Henry, you didn't mean to kill him? You already told us you had the idea. Well, sure I had the idea. Let me explain, huh? We both went to sleep in the shack, Davis and me. Guess that must have been, all oh, about 9 o'clock at night. I don't know what it was. Maybe the wine, I guess, but I start having nightmares. Hmm? Yeah, now, maybe this part sounds like a story, but it's the truth. I had all these dreams. I woke up, but they're still there. What was that? Faces. Faces, that's all I could see. Air is full of faces. I, I, I guess I was really still asleep. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I, I picked up a two-by-four and started swinging at them. Their faces. Funny thing, too. I knew every one of these faces. How do you mean? People I killed. There are only a dozen of them. Really. It seemed like there were a hundred of them all around in the air. Well, I grabbed that two-by-four and I started swinging. I was cold and sweating all at the same time. And I kept on swinging. And I saw Davis's face and I swung hard. I kept swinging. Didn't he make a sound? His eyes closed. Kept on swinging at his head. Well, when I come to, there he was. Lying on the floor. Seemed to take those other faces away. They didn't bother me after I killed David. What'd you do with him, Henry? Oh, pulled him outside the shack, dug a hole and buried him. Burned his clothes, took his car and money, and drove off. I'll show you if you like where I buried him, I mean. 
How about these other men? What's these faces you saw? Hmm? Yeah. Hey, uh, when do I get a little more coffee? Huh? It's all gone. I'll get it. Joe? No, no thanks. None for me. What about it, Ross? The other man. Well, I don't recall them too well. It's what you said in the office. Ten or twelve of them. A couple in Sacramento. The others down through the valley. Like they say, there was no big reason for killing them. It just happened that way. Yes. What'd you do with them, you remember? Generally, uh, there's one of them that stands up. Guy by the name of Slattery. Some kind of salesman. A real crybaby. Where'd this happen? No, I'm picking up in his car outside of Churchilla. It's nighttime. He must be feeling pretty good. I made him stop on a side road. I hit him with a piece of angle and cried like a baby. Buried him in a field there. It's one of the faces that I saw. That. That's funny, huh? It shows you how psychology works, huh? Yeah, what'd you do with his car? Slatteries, I mean. Drove it down to Mexico and saw it there. I guess that's what I should have done with Davis' car. Oh, here you go. Oh, hey. These killings of yours, you got any more you want to tell us about? Well, I told you already. Ten or twelve of them. They're pretty much the same. When was the first one? Oh, maybe... 18 months, two years ago. First one wasn't any harder than the last. It's just like I was telling you before. Yeah. Everybody builds up murder. It's supposed to be a big thing, hard to do, all those phony stories. I'd just hit a guy a couple of times or something, that'd be it. A real small thing. Didn't change me any. That's why I say it's, it's all built up. You ever been treated for any mental sickness, Ross? No, why? You ever been examined by a psychiatrist? No. After you killed these men, did it bother you at all? I'm just that wondering. The time I was with Davis... Sure, good meal, Sergeant. Thanks. Yeah, okay. You ready, Ben? Let's go. Right. Go back upstairs, huh? Yeah. Do you want to give us a statement? All right. I had an idea you'd find me. I guess I always knew that you'd find me. Well, let's go here. Guess I proved my point anyway, huh? It's all build up. Huh? Murder. Killing somebody. Those phony stories. It's all build up. It's no, you got it wrong, Henry. Huh? Wait till they read you the bill. The story you have just heard was true. Only the names were changed to protect the innocent. On January 7th, trial was held in Superior Court, Department 86, City and County of Los Angeles, State of California. In a moment, the results of that trial. Now, here is our star, Jack Webb. Thank you. Friends, the makers of Fatima have done everything possible to produce the kind of cigarette you want, just as we on Dragnet try to bring you the kind of entertainment you want. In my honest opinion, Fatima is the best of all long cigarettes. But frankly, my opinion doesn't count because Fatimas must please you. That's why I suggest you buy a pack of Fatimas tomorrow so you can prove to yourself that Fatimas are extra mild with a rich, better flavor and aroma. You'll find Fatima now costs the same as other long cigarettes. And I'm convinced that you'll discover what I did. In Fatima, the difference is quality. Henry Ellsworth Ross was tried and found guilty on two counts of murder in the first degree and received the death sentence. While he indicated that he had murdered the other ten men, he refused to give any further information regarding the killings or what he had done with the body. Ross was executed in the lethal gas chamber at the state penitentiary, San Quentin, California. You have just heard Dragnet, a series of authentic cases from official files. Technical advice comes from the office of Chief of Police, W.H. Parker, Los Angeles Police Department. Fatima Cigarettes, best of all long cigarettes, has brought you Dragnet portions transcribed from Los Angeles. Now more excitement with Counter Spy on NBC. 